Uh, I think the next thing we want to talk about is uh, benefit design. We talked a little bit about that, but there, there's a couple things I wanted to bring up there. Is one, I think managed care is generally unprepared for specialty in general. So a lot of us might have a specialty tier, uh, we, but under medical we might have one drug tier. Uh, we don't have tiers or we don't have a strategy, generally speaking, to deal with all the specialty drugs that are coming and biosimilars and generics. Because these drugs, because of the cost, are all put on one tier. So there really is no incentive for the provider or the member to use less expensive, more cost-effective medications. So we really need to readdress benefit design and whether that's multiple tiers or different tiers for biosimilars. And then with that, we need to do a better job, and we've tried to do this, but we need to do a better job of aligning the medical versus pharmacy benefit because there still is a misalignment there. So a member may pay nothing under medical and they may have a big out-of-pocket under pharmacy. So that also drives uh, different decision makings that are not necessarily clinically appropriate. Um, and this is all driven by an investment in information technology and EMRs and all those kind of things. But we need to really, I think, invest in that. If we do, um, we'll have a better objective measurement of, of the data and, and hopefully remove some of the misaligned incentives that are currently, uh, currently, that currently exist in benefit design. So I think benefit design uh, cut, cuts in a variety of ways. And, and uh, I've worked in systems where we had limited, uh, a limited asset to use and al also a limited amount to spend on individual patients with a given diagnosis. Now, the problem is for the newer drugs, often if there's an alternative, we're not quite sure what it is. So do you get comparative efficacy for two very expensive drugs? What happens where uh, drugs become generic, where the price uh, falls, often rapidly, but sometimes more slowly for a variety of reasons, or where there's competition from biosimilars that in my mind have demonstrated equivalent efficacy but, but have a, a difference in price, is how you present that to the people who are, who are making the decisions uh, uh, about treatment. So one of the problems that, that we have in the current system is that I am relatively immune from the amount that the cost of prescribing a pill costs. It's only when the patient comes back and says, my goodness, there was a $3,000 copay on that drug, and the biosimilar drug, they said, or the generic, was $3. You know, do I need to pay $3,000? Now, that's a big gap, and it's usually not that. but. I then, as a physician, am forced to look at the evidence uh, for that. And this is, this is coming. We've got some very good biosimilar uh, makers uh, that are bringing some, some uh, alternatives to high-cost drugs to oncology uh, where we're going to be challenged in, in this area. It's going to change, I think, our, our treatment. And my view, having worked for, for World Health for a number of years where we had very limited budgets, uh, and where we had to make a choice between vaccinating against meningitis and, and, and buying a million tablets of penicillin, literally, uh, you know, it, it's a difficult decision, uh, but we end up having to dis distribute the asset. So if I can save uh, by, by making my LHRH therapy uh, cheaper, uh, and by, by using a, a cheaper generic drug uh, to protect bone early in the disease and then switching, uh, if I can save some assets for the treatment of that patient and I'm made accountable, I will, I will work with the patient who's actually you know, as close to payer as I get for that and make a decision. At, at the moment, as a clinician, um, all I get is, you, you know, I have to do a peer-to-peer -peer with, with one of you guys when I want something if we don't tick all the boxes correctly, right? And uh, so that's, that's actually just a situation where I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, this is my time. I could be enjoying time with my family or uh, seeing some patients and, and in quotes, uh, contributing to my, my practice income. Um, whereas uh, the active sort of management tool is uh, putting the onus on us and the patient to say, look, this therapy is going to be equivalent, but it's going to cost less and there's a benefit to you, the patient, uh, of having that or you don't lose anything, at least in, the, in this time period.